Um, so, uh, thanks for the opportunity to present. Um, I'm Litzke Bakker, and I am currently finishing the final chapter of my uh, dissertation at uh, the Erasmus School of Health Policy and Management. And as uh, part of the, this uh, final chapter, uh, we had some long-term survival data, and uh, we wanted to compare the short-term or the extrapolations based on the short-term data to the uh, long-term uh, true outcomes. And uh, in doing so, uh, I needed to estimate uh, restricted mean survival time, and uh, this actually nicely uh, coincided with this opportunity. So um, what I'll discuss today is I'll start with a uh, brief background on uh, reporting treatment effects and um, particularly uh, restricted mean survival time, very short mention of the methods, and then on with uh, particularly the R code that I used to uh, estimate my results. And um, yeah. so uh, underneath you may find the, the my GitHub uh, link where you may find the code. Um, okay, so first of all, some background. Uh, as we're all well aware, uh, survival data are typically uh, right-centered, and uh, in our uh, cost, effectiveness, uh, cost effectiveness analyses, we generally uh, need to extrapolate results since we adopt a lifetime horizon, uh, also much shorter, but definitely longer than the average trial. Um, so, uh, as I just previously, previously briefly mentioned, uh, in my study, I had to compare um, short-term uh, extrapolations from based on short-term results to um, long-term empirical survival. So, uh, most of us are familiar with the hazard ratio, and this is also uh, what is uh, well almost always used currently to report treatment effects. Um, so this, of course, is the, is the ratio of the hazards uh, of the treatment and the control arm. And um, well, I said frequently, but it's probably more accurate to say uh, almost always uh, this is used in the clinical studies that we use. Um, as we can see here in the figure, of course, uh, you have the hazard ratio and the two curves are presented. Uh, the hazard ratio is presented uh, with the confidence interval uh, surrounding this. Um, some nice, uh, yeah, a benefit, of course, of the hazard ratio is that it is a single value and that it's uh, basically uh, ways to estimate it are uh, available in almost, uh, well, basically all statistical software. Um, however, of course, it also assumes, um, well, in most of these estimations that um, uh, the hazards are proportional. Um, so, yeah, there are some limitations. Um, on which there's increasing attention uh, recently. Uh, of course, it's quite difficult to explain. Um, and especially, for instance, if you want to convey results of different treatment options to patients. Um, but also, like I just mentioned, it assumes proportional hazards, um, which is often actually um, not the case. So um, as an alternative, uh, in recent literature, you see um, an increasing emphasis on uh, the possibility to at least also mention uh, the difference in restricted mean survival time between the two treatment options. Um, and uh, this refers to the difference in um, yeah, the average survival area under the curve um, between the two uh, treatment options, the treatment and the control. Uh, but this is restricted to a certain period in time. So for instance, time zero until um, month 24 or month 36, uh, depending on um, yeah, your study. Uh, important to mention uh, for when reporting uh, the difference in restricted mean survival time, this should always be reported with um, uh, the rates uh, for both arms, uh, the time horizon for which results are restricted, uh, so the time horizon selected, so like month 36 or month 24, uh, and of course the survival curves. Um, yeah. So, just as a, I found this very uh, illustrative, this figure, uh, but basically here we have the uh, hazard uh, rates uh, and we see how this nicely translates into a um, hazard ratio, which is constant over time. Um, the survival curves where you clearly see that the control, of course, is below the treatment arm, uh, as we can also see that the hazard of, uh, of the treated are, is below the uh, control. Uh, and then at the end, we see how this translate into uh, a restrict difference in restricted mean survival time. So 
there's different methods and um royce and parma quite a long time ago they uh, emphasized um for some of these methods uh the differences uh, and some of the benefits or downsides and what you see for restricted mean survival time um overall there's quite a lot of benefits in the sense that it doesn't assume proportional hazards but it also takes into account what has happened uh in terms of survival uh throughout the entire time period so it's not uh like um the uh, absolute difference in survival which only considers uh the um uh yeah the difference at that explicit time point uh however of course the restriction is the fact that you are limiting um your estimate to a uh, what was based on a certain time point that you decide uh, and anything that happens after of course is not taken into account um so there's several methods to estimate restricted mean survival time um so the two options in red uh, are the ones that i included uh, in the rest of the presentation uh, because those were the ones i needed um but i would like to emphasize that there are multiple options um, so, of course, first of all, you have uh, the results uh, from the kaplan meyer curve, and uh, you simply estimate the, uh, the area under the curve uh, to estimate the average survival or the difference in average survival depending on uh, your aim. Um, as an alternative, uh, of course, we're all well aware with uh, the fact that we'd like to fit uh, certain fle more flexible models uh, to actually extrapolate results. Um, and here also, the area under the curve of these uh, models fitted can be estimated. Estimated, of course, a nice thing here is that it allows for, for us to include uh, covariates um, and how this in, impacts uh, your uh, results. Um, uh, another alternative, uh, so there's also some other non-parametric alternatives that also allow for covariate adjustments. Um, I didn't include them here, but um, one of the options is, for instance, uh, pseudo values. And instead of calculating the area under the curve, um, what this does is that it uh, estimates a um, a pseudo value for restricted mean survival for each individual and then uh, taking into account the different um, characteristics of the patients or the different how all these individuals differ and then it estimates a mean restricted mean survival time uh, of all these different individuals with their different pseudo values um, an alternative also uh, yeah for instance like a cox model what we are well aware with um, and then there's uh, certain uh, other options as well so um, for my results, I had to focus on the kaplan meyer in which I had to estimate the uh, area under the curve for the long-term empirical survival and also the, uh, and compare this to the parametric estimates. Um, so the packages that I used, um, first of all, the serve rm 2 package, uh, which, um, uh, yeah, it's based on uh, the kaplan meyer estimate. It's, it's on parametric uh, and it reports the confidence intervals um this package was also really uh designed uh really to compare uh different treatments uh where i only needed actually the, the single arm it's originally really designed to uh, compare arms um and the risk of package uh, is yeah uh, perhaps a bit more simple the uh, restricted means survival time function there uh it just reports the point estimate and uh does not consider the confidence interval um and of course i use the flex uh, flexurf uh, package uh, to estimate um uh, the parametric outcomes so in the remaining uh, remainder of the example i use the um colon data set in the survival package um so for the remainder of the presentation this is called data surf which is simply the colon data set um i only included the individuals that um uh, deceased uh and only the two treatments ops and lev and uh well i only included four parameters in the in the data set the treatment which is rx uh, the age um the time so the actual uh, final follow-up time and the status were they censored or were they um did they die so uh first uh i'll briefly discuss the kaplan meyer estimates and hereafter i'll discuss the parametric estimates so uh, also here, I am. I could imagine that there's actually an easier way to do this. So I'd be very interested if someone else actually at the end has uh, experience with uh, perhaps a more simple method to actually estimate the point estimate with the uh, confidence intervals. Um, but first, to start with the RM2 package. Um, so first of all, the um, treatments uh, when estimating restricted mean survival time with the uh, RMS2 function. Uh, requires that the treatments are included as uh, numeric 
Um, so here I adjusted them to make sure that they're numeric. Um, and then the ARMS2 uh, function estimates, uh, so it uses the time, um, which was the last follow-up time, the status, of course, the censoring status, and the treatment. The tau here refers to the, uh, the the time for which you'd like to estimate restricted mean survival time. And uh, to be honest, I just took a random number, which was uh, 2,190 days. Um, and I saved these as an object. And from that object, I wanted to have the um, uh, estimate, the uh, lower confidence interval, and the uh, upper confidence interval. Well, when printed, this is basically the result. So the um, restricted mean survival time for this treatment, the observation, uh, was 1,523 uh, uh, days uh, with uh, well, quite a confidence interval uh, surrounding that, quite some uncertainty. So um, for the risk package, um, basically what happens here is that uh, it uses a surfeit object as input. Um, of course, using the uh, time and the status uh, from the colon data set. And um, I also restricted here to the observational arm, uh, similar to what you're seeing here. Uh, so these results are for the ops arm, and this is the same. Um, and then um, I uh, estimated also a restricted mean survival time using the RMST function in the RISCA package, um, the, uh, which requires as input the uh, time from the surfit object and the, uh, the surf. Uh, outcomes. Once again, here are the time to which uh, estimates are restricted, and you see, of course, uh, it's the same estimate. So for the um, parametric um, estimates, I based this on, well, I included four functions. Uh, we probably only need two, but uh, I included a function to fit the models, um, two functions to plot the survival curves, uh, the extrapolated survival curves, and one function to plot uh, or estimate restricted mean survival time. Um, so first of all, uh, yeah, I used the function because I had to do this quite a lot of time, uh, a lot of times with the data. Um, and basically what happens in this function is that um, it's a function that as uh, arguments requires the distributions that need to be fitted, uh, the data uh, and the treatment arm uh, for which I'm fitting this data. Um, then, first of all, it has uh, it creates a, it requires a function. I, I drafted a function uh, to actually uh, use the flex serve reg argument to fit the different models, the different distributions. Um, I included a try catch argument, um, so I used the flex serve reg uh, argument, and I included the try catch argument because sometimes uh, um, the models didn't converge, uh, and that's the reason I included these because I did want to know which models uh, were actually um not fitting well but i did also want to know uh, i did yeah i did wanted to uh avoid the fact that it returned an error and then um yeah it doesn't work anymore um and then this function i applied it uh i uh using apply uh, i applied it to all the different distributions um this returns a list with all the different uh models so here we have the distributions and then we uh use the f fitted models uh, to uh, using the distributions, which uh, yeah, have, can be seen above, the data surf, which is the colon data, and limited to the observational uh, of the uh, ops uh, treatment arm. So hereafter, we have a list with all the different fitted uh, functions. In the second step, so uh, I plotted the curves, and I used two um, functions here, and uh, especially this first one. I, I, yeah, if anybody has a quicker way to uh, predict the extrapolated survival, uh, I'd be very interested. Um, so the idea is that it, uh, uh, I drafted a list that uh, estimates the survival curves, um, and then uh, using the T is uh, sequence, so adjust it depending on the sequence that I include here, uh, will determine uh, how far I go with my extrapolations in terms of time. Uh, and in this case, I included, uh, I just didn't include a type argument because I limited to the survival. Uh, but of course, you could add other um, yeah, outcomes here. So uh, the fpred function, what it does, it uses the distributions that we just saw and the models fitted, so the list that we just generated, uh, in a uh, internal function where the uh, models fitted, uh, their summary, um, what this, this first part do, does is that um, 
from the using the summary function, it uses the uh, list of fitted models and a different time sequence to which uh, based on which the originally uh, the uh, models were fitted. Uh, so instead of, uh, I think the original data set included 3,000 days, or the final follow-up of the final patient was 3,000 days, and here I included 5,000 days. Um, and then it returns uh, the um, the S value is just the base point uh, estimate of survival for these patients. Um, you could also, instead of using S, you can include the lower CI or the upper CI, which are also uh, a result of the uh, summary with uh, a, a different uh, time sequence. So once again, using LApply, I uh, use the models fitted as input and this, um, and I fitted the prediction function uh, for all these models fitted. Uh, this results list with um, yeah, all the different uh, survival, uh, uh, predicted survival estimates for the extrapolated survival estimates from zero to 5,000 uh, days. Um, and then I plotted the curves. Um, in the second function that uses the, once again, the distributions, the data, the treatment, uh, the title, um, and the PRED, so the list that was just estimated, the survival list. Um, here the uh, labels, uh, first of all, um, include the Kaplan-Meier curve, uh, which I wanted to include to compare, and then the uh, different distributions that were fitted. Using rainbow, I selected several colors, um, and then I plotted uh, the surfeit, the Kaplan-Meier curve, um, and of course what you see here is that the X limit is uh, actually 5,000 uh, days. Then for the, um, for each uh, Kaplan-Meier, so for each curve uh, that was plotted in the PRED object, I um, plotted uh, that, uh, varying the color each time uh, depending on uh, yeah, the curve. A legend, of course, was added here uh, with the color fitting uh, the distribution fitted. Um, oh, using the plot function, uh, yeah, you can see it implemented here, the distributions, the different data, uh, the treatment, the title, and the uh, input uh, of the list with uh, predicted survival for 5,000 uh, days. Um, so what you can see here is you have the Kaplan-Meier curve, of course, and then the uh, extrapolated uh, survival curves. So in the final, um, part what I did, I estimated a uh, restricted mean survival time. Um, so once again, I created the function for the final part to um, include the fitted uh, M, which is the list of the models fitted, so the first function used, and the restricted mean survival time. So depending on, uh, once again, the 2,190 days here, um, but of course that could be something different, um, yeah, in the uh, depending on what you'd like to do. Once again, I uh, drafted a function in which um, the restricted mean survival time is estimated uh, using uh, the Flexive package, so the summary. And instead of um, yeah, creating survival, uh, survival data uh, or the survival estimates, uh, I use the type RMST, which basically gives you the uh, restricted mean survival time estimate. And I see that I still have a concatenate here, which should um, probably be uh, removed, but um, you can just add as a T, you need to include the restricted mean survival time, which is the uh, 2,190 days here. Um, and originally I had to adjust this from days to years, so hence the concatenate arounding it, uh, but that shouldn't be necessary. Once again, I wanted the models that didn't fit, I want them to be printed here because I wanted them in my overview. Um, but of course you could simply remove the try catch um, if uh, you're not interested in that. Um, then I applied this function to uh, the models fitted. Um, here we have the FES RMST function. I applied this to all the models fitted and this returned a list with uh, all my results. Uh, in this case, I also wanted it to be presented as a table. So here the function is uh, applied to the uh, uh, fitted models. And here I adjusted it to uh, present a table uh, where for each of the distributions you have, of course, the time for which you have estimated restricted mean survival time, uh, but also the estimate, um, the lower confidence interval and the upper confidence interval. Uh, as we see, and I see that I didn't include the restricted mean survival time of the Kaplan Maya. But that was, I think, 1,523 uh, days. 
And um, you see that uh, there's quite a lot of deviations uh, in the point estimates, which is unsurprising. But if you, because if you see the uh, Kaplan or the, the plot, uh, the fit was pretty poor. Um, so I don't think that's probably surprising. Um, so then, um, yeah, that was basically the code then. Um, I'm not sure, I can't see if there are any questions, so let me check. Uh, but otherwise, I also had some other uh, points uh, that I was interested in, uh, whether others have thoughts on that. But let me um, first see what the questions are. Th thank you, Lindsay. That was a very nice presentation. There are some uh, questions. So <clears throat> there was one from Dawn, and she says, um, why is setting a seed necessary when using RMST2, and which part is using random numbers? Oh, yeah. No, it was uh, the, I think when estimating the confidence intervals, uh, they uh, sometimes differ. Okay, so you're just making sure it's all, yeah. Yeah, because I wanted to compare them now. Yeah. Sure, okay. And then yeah. there's, a, there's a couple of comments about different uh, functions. So there's a comment from Claire about potentially using pH reg or AFT reg functions um, when Flexor fails to converge. So that's just something to note. And then another comment from uh, Martin, um, this serve HE package provided by Gianluca um, provides a wrapper for accessing different survival packages using a common uh, model call. And it also may provide functions to calculate the RMST. So that's something also to think about. Yeah. Um, and then a, a comment question, I guess, from Ismail, another role with the AIC values would be useful. Um, if that's something you might want to, to push yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yes. Uh, um, so yes. Yeah. We included the uh, AIC and BIC in the uh, yeah when comparing. Um, right now, I really limited to just the uh, restricted mean survival time. Um, but yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, um, so, so sorry. Go ahead. No. Yes. Yeah, so I was wondering also that, that if uh, one of the packages that I also came across was the. Um, uh, is at RMST package, uh, but also uh, it's uh, it seems no longer available. Um, so that was also something that I thought it was useful. It seemed useful, um, and I'll look at those alternatives perhaps also to estimate the Kaplan Meier estimates in the uh, um, uh, through the SURF uh, HE package. Package, yeah. So was that AZ package produced by AstraZeneca, or is that? Um... Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yes. I don't know if it says. I don't know if Miguel is still on the call. I don't think he is, um, but perhaps we can ask him afterwards um, if if that's still available and why uh, why it isn't. But um... yeah, no, and it allowed also, uh, for instance, the use of uh, pseudo values uh, or the estimation of pseudo values. Um, so it allowed for multiple uh, options, and of course, some uh, uh, it was here and there. It was a wrapper for some of the flex serve options as well. Um, but um, yeah, and. What stage is your work at? So do you have much capacity to explore these other packages or other ways of going about it? Or do you feel quite committed to what you've done so far? Um, well, overall, um, well, I'd like to improve it if possible, actually. Um, so in terms of submission, I uh, have to hand in my dissertation in, in five weeks. Okay. Um, so I need to uh, make, the final, make the decisions. But uh, on the other hand, yeah, if, if I can improve this. Um, because I'm sure it will be useful in the future. Um, so for part of the data, I need to include it in my dissertation, but there's some other data that um, uh, we would like to apply it to uh, in the future, um, but doesn't need to be included in my dissertation. So yeah, okay. well, good, good luck with yeah. that.